Bob McKenzie has officially released his preseason top 20 for the 2025 NHL draft. Now we get a great indication of what scouts are thinking for this draft class, which is looking very, very interesting. So today we're going to be going through every single pick to see how it differs from my rankings and to see what the NHL is thinking. So make sure you watch till the end and hit that subscribe button for more hockey prospect content just like this presented by BetUS. Now we got the official confirmation here from TSN confirming that we would see a preseason draft rankings from Bob McKenzie. And interestingly, it's a top 20 list. Usually it starts more in the top 10, but this time around, we have a lot of prospects to talk about. Now, as McKenzie mentions in this article, it really is an introduction to the 2025 class based almost exclusively on last year's performances and or summer events such as the Helinka Gretzky and the World Junior Summer Showcase. And that is true because we've only really seen a couple of leagues start up already in the KHL, in the Liga, so, so far it is extremely early. But getting us started inside this top 20, this is actually the most unanimous spot in the top 20. James Higgins comes in at first place, no surprise here. As McKenzie mentions, he was the near unanimous choice for number one on the annual preseason ranking, and the actual race for number one has just begun. According to one NHL head scout, it wasn't a particularly difficult choice to make Higgins number one on the preseason list, and, you know, I gotta agree with it. In other words, while Higgins could very well play his way to first overall status. It's far too early to label this the James Higgins draft in the same manner we did in each of the past two years with Bedard and Celebrini. Now, I don't think we're going to see a unanimous number one overall pick like Bedard for a long time now. He was a slam dunk heading into the season and continued to be one. Celebrini, I think, was a lot closer. You had even players at the preseason level like Ivan Demidov, who I think were in contention with Celebrini. And even throughout the year, I still think were contenders for that spot. Celebrini was ultimately the unanimous number one, but I think that was more so because of the class around him rather than him being this slam dunk. But still the Hobie Baker and how well he did in the NCAA really assured that number one position for. Him. In Higgins' spot, I would say he's right up that Celebrini alley where he's not this generational centerman, but I think he can be this franchise face. He's somebody that already has proven so much in then the NCDP ranks. I mean, last year in the U18 level, a year before he should have been at that level, he was a 102 point mark, 39 goals, 63 assists in 58 games. Ridiculous numbers and you look at the u18 world juniors too 22 points nine goals in seven games just pure dominance. It also helps that he'll be going to Boston College this year, which has so many players to work with. And now that you have players as well, like Will Smith graduating on, you still have some good players left behind, like Gabe Perot and Ryan Leonard that Hagens is going to be so good with. Now, after number one is where this list gets a lot more interesting because coming at second place, we have the first D on the list with Matthew Schaefer out of the Erie Otters. According to TSN survey, five out of the 10 scouts slotted Schaefer at number two, and he was the only other prospect than Hagen to not get a vote outside the top five. One scout said, I have a feeling Schaefer will be a really difficult guy for some teams to pass off on, even at number one. But as Bob McKenzie notes, and this is something that was just announced recently, Schaefer will be starting the OHL on the sidelines as he was recently diagnosed with mono. This is not extremely rare. We see, I would say, a prospect every couple of years in their draft year being diagnosed with it, and it kind of hurting some of their stock. I think the same will likely happen with Schaefer, but you can make the case that it probably shouldn't. Now, in my last draft rankings release, I had Schaefer at number nine as the second best D in the class, and we'll get into that debate with Logan Hensler in a bit. I think this is maybe due to some circumstances where I've seen a lot more of Hensler throughout his time, and especially now coming to Wisconsin, I'll be able to see him a lot. Whereas in Schaefer's case, he's one of the players at the top end of this draft that I've seen the least. But I agree with the assessment there that the skating is brilliant. It is the top end trait there. It's so fluid. It's so good up the ice. His mobility is incredible. I watched him a lot more at the start of last season where I think there was a lot more rawness to his game, but he's somebody that I think points wise has a lot of a ways to go last year getting 17 points in 56 OHL games but you can see the progression as well as he started to play in the U18 World Juniors as a D he had an excellent tournament and that was by far the best play that I've seen out of him five points in seven games just so good all around and I think in Schaefer's case especially with his youth too being a September birth date I think you have a lot of traits and a lot of potential to build upon and if you have him as a second best prospect the best D in this class I could totally see why the problem is he was the player that I was the most excited to see for this regular season to see the jump that he can make but now with him having mono that's something that will affect his play at least to start things off so I would say to be cautious with him to start things out this year and be patient with him because he's obviously going to be dealing with a lot and hopefully he'll be able to bounce back from that. Now we're really starting to get going here and number three comes Anton Frindell and I love to see this position for him there is some I think improvements that Frindell will make this next year but I love to see the confidence in him right here at number three. McKenzie says that he probably projects more as a number two NHL center rather than a number 
one because his offensive productivity is not necessarily elite, but his all-around game is excellent, which is to say he can generate offense both by scoring and making plays, but he is also dedicated to a smart defensive game that includes a healthy amount of physical play. One scout said he's just a really good two-way center with all the tools. And interestingly, Frindell received votes from number two to number six out of the, and six out of the 10 scouts had him either number two or number three. Now, interestingly, this whole conversation around Frindell actually reminds me quite a bit of Anton Lindell and the conversation around him in his draft year. Very similar names aside. They both, I think, share pretty similar qualities. I would say Frindell has a lot more creativity to his game, even though, as Kenzie has noted, the two-way game and the physical play and the board possession is something that has really been highlighted. But I think in Frindell's case, he's somebody that I've still been really impressed with, with the two-way knack, with the goal-scoring ability that he has in front of that. And I think that physicality, though, and the maturity already has lent himself already to a lot of success. We'll see if he's able to grow past that and have more to his game. That, to me, was the big question heading into this year. But to see him at third overall, not really much of a surprise. Now, it is pretty surprising to see at number four, Porter Martone, who I kind of assumed would be second place on this list, considering the tenacity, the skill level, the goal scoring. I thought the scouts that were going to be surveyed here would absolutely be in love with him. Now, when it comes to the actual survey, Martone had nine of the 10 votes in the top five, and the lone vote outside of that was at number six. He has all the physical attributes to play a hard-hitting and agitating game, but he's fast and skilled too. He scored 33 goals last season, so suffice to say, scouts are excited to see if he can do all that and more consistently this season. Interestingly, one scout said, in terms of style, think Corey Perry, but with better skating. At least that's what the scouts believe his goal should be. And I can kind of see where they're coming from with that. I mean, Corey Perry is a big expectation to have, but if he does have that similar trajectory, I wouldn't be surprised. Martone is going to be an instant fan favorite for a lot of reasons. He's somebody that can do so much with his physical play, with the possession game he has, with the strong traits that he already has too. He's somebody that you can see why he's had OHL dominance already. 71 points in six games last year, 33 goals in Mississauga. He's just going to be so much fun to watch. He's going to be an instant fan favorite too, wherever he goes to, because you can see the work ethic. You can see the speed. You can see how the growth in his game as well over these past couple of years, and it's been a joy to watch. At number five comes my boy, Ivan. On Ryabkin, who's already started in Russia. He's somebody that I like to see being in the top five. Apparently, Ryabkin received two votes at number two behind only Hagen's, and is, as is often the case with Russian prospects, had his support sprinkled throughout from number two to all the way to number nine. And as one scout says, high end skills, skates really well, good size and strength, just your really good all around Russian center. Now, that is the big component here because usually when you have this top end Russian coming through the draft, like a Demidov or a Michkov, they're natural wingers, right? They're going to like project his wingers to the next level. Ryabkin is a different story. He's a natural centerman. He's somebody that plays that position really well. I don't think he's going to be this defensive stud or anything, but he's going to be somebody that with the skating, with the just in tight skill set, he's so much fun. Every single shift out there, it seems like he's creating something new. He's like Demidov if he was grown up as this natural centerman. And in Ryabkin's case, I think that's something that will give him a lot of value on draft day. Now, he hasn't gotten to this roaring start yet this season, but he had played some KHL minutes, which I think is pretty good to see. We'll see how much he actually does get by the end of the season, but most likely will be in the MHL full time. Now, before we keep going outside the top five, I first want to talk to you guys about today's sponsor in BetUS. Right now, they're doing a great deal of the code U2150. You get a 150% sign up bonus on your first deposit and 125% sign up bonus on your next two deposits there, which is a fantastic deal, especially with the hockey season starting. You'll have so many opportunities to win big, whether it be going for the Stanley Cup winners and eventually with the games going, you'll be able to bet on all those games live during the periods where Whatever you want to do, you have the options with BetUS. As of right now, before the season, though, you can go for the Stanley Cup winners. You can go through all the uh, different trophies, whether it be the Calder, the Rocket Richard, the Hart Trophy, Norris Trophy. You can even go through the divisions, the Atlantic, Metro, Central, and Pacific. And recently, I went through my standings predictions and had the Stars as the winner in the end. And you know what? We're going to go with them. They have plus 215 odds, which I think are pretty good for, I think, how much of a lock they are. We're going to put $5 down to win 10, and we'll see how that works by the end of the season. But as I mentioned before, use code YouTube150 when you sign up to BetUS and thank you to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. Now this list keeps getting spicy here because at number six we have Roger McQueen. Now this isn't too surprising of a position 
But what the scouts said were pretty interesting here. But as Bob McKenzie mentions, and this was something that he mentioned earlier in the article, McQueen is the only prospect not named Hagens to get a number one vote. And it was interesting that he got a number two vote as well. But the rest of his support ranged from number six to number 10. Scouts are obviously intrigued by his six foot five frame and above average skating ability, but we'll be looking for him to be a lot more consistent this season than last. And that's the big one. McQueen is a late 2006 born prospect, so it's not unusual for scouts to expect to see a little bit more maturity in their draft year from late birthday prospects. Incidentally, the other top rated prospects who are late born 2006s include Hagens and Martone. Hagens has to obviously deliver on that maturity productivity. The scouts will be looking for Martone and McQueen to do the same thing in the early going of the season. And I could totally see where those scouts are coming from. I mean, McQueen is somebody that's danced around maybe my three to four range as high as that. Right now, he's in my seventh position, but he's somebody that I could absolutely see why you'd be so confident. And as Mackenzie mentioned, the skating level for his size is pretty impeccable, but already the way he's able to use his body, protect the puck, the way he's able to play along the boards and just play against big, strong competition already, I think is incredibly encouraging. And you can see a solid WHL campaign last year, 51 points in 53 games. He started out absolutely blistering, but again, those inconsistencies start to show up. But I think the, I think the conditioning was something that McQueen needed to improve upon as well. But there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot to unlock. And in McQueen's case, if you see him as this top prospect, this top five guy, I, I could totally see why. And the fact that some scout out there had him number one over Hagen's, that's bold, man, but I love to see that boldness. Now, at number seven, a similar position to where I have him, we have Michael Misa out of Saginaw. Obviously, exceptional status player here. I do think he's not going to live up to that type of level, but I think number seven is completely fair. As Mackenzie mentioned, Saginaw Spirit skilled offensive center Michael Misa, who was granted exceptional status by Canada in 2022. He received two votes in the top five and none beyond number eight. Misa is a smart and creative player who does his best work with the puck. In Misa's case, I'm not really surprised that there were no votes out outside the top eight because he's just incredibly solid there's so much to like there offensively he's really smart for his age with the puck he has such great vision and creative speed and the way he's able to deceive especially around the boards and in tight there's a lot to like there offensively I do think for Misa he's not this exceptional generational player ironically enough but I think he's gonna be a great complimentary offensive piece who you love to have on your team and number eight I love to see Malcolm Spence here not as high as I would have him but I really enjoy Malcolm Spence's game and it seems like other scouts do too. Mackenzie mentions uh, Malcolm Spence, who is also a late 2006 born prospect. Spence plays a gritty two way game. He had two top five votes, but the rest of his support was in number sevens to number 16 range. Now, even though Spence is one of the oldest players for this class, so it makes it a little bit easier, I think he's absolutely one of the most mature, one of the most NHL ready players already. He's somebody that really has his game fueled by the defensive habits and the physical pressure that he provides. And I think that's something that will really aid him at the pro level. That's something that I think will create a lot of chaos for the other teams that have to go against him he's something that is just so smart in the way he positions himself and the defensive reads the effort that he puts in his all-around game there's a lot to like there I don't think there's exceptional offensive ceiling there or anything but I think there's a lot there to like especially for a middle six in the future now at number nine we go on to my top defenseman in this draft at least as of right now in Logan Hensler and kind of like Malcolm Spence I think there is so many pro habits there already the way he way he reads offenses quickly and reads those attackers so well I think is just such a good trait going into the future he's somebody that I think is just so good with his skating so good with the way he reads the game that there's already been so much potential there already I do think there's a lot of more offense to unlock in Hensler than a lot of people are willing to admit and to me I think that's the reason why he is number one for me but I just see the most NHL ready most NHL projectable play out of Hensler to me out of any D in this class but we'll see how it how it goes into this next season because obviously going to the NCAA will be a big jump for him but I think he'll get the minutes to really succeed Seat. Now at number 10, somebody that I like more and more whenever I watch him is Caleb Denoye, who is somebody that I think is going to get a big reputation in this draft class for a good reason. Playing with Moncton, he's somebody that already last year was able to get 56 points in 60 games. To me, unlike a lot of top-end Kume JHL players, Denoye plays the game so smartly. He's somebody that is able to play such a great support role, especially up the ice. He's a great transitional player, but he's somebody that makes the right decisions, doesn't cheat for offense, and that's something that I think is pretty rare for Quebec. That's something that I want to see out of these young players. I want to see pro habits. I want to see these great pro decision-making levels. And in Denoy's case, he's one of the best in this draft class for it. And I think you'll see a lot of success for him 
because of it. Now, a bit of a surprise, but maybe not by too much. At number 12, they have Radamirica, which is gonna be a fascinating project. You can see as somebody that doesn't turn 18 until June, he's already six foot six, 198 pounds as a right shot D. And he's somebody that with mobility, he has the fast skating speed for six foot six. It's not really too hard to see why scouts adore him. He's somebody that's already starting in the Czech League main one this year, which is good to see out of him. I have my problems with some of the processing of the game that he has. He's somebody that I think under pressure can have some real rough moments here and there but there is potential no doubt in what Mirchuka could be as a defensive defenseman and we'll see how he progresses this year now another pretty big surprise here is Jake O'Brien coming in at 14th he's somebody that is considered to be a first rounder but all the way number 14 is pretty interesting he did have a really successful year of Brantford last year getting 64 points in 61 games and the playmaking is the big strength as you can see for somebody that doesn't even turn 18 until June he's got a good frame at six foot two 170 pounds and last year got 51 assists in 61 games for the Bulldogs already an advanced player playmaker and that to me is the big strength the vision especially under pressure is tantalizing he's somebody that already just reads the pressure so well reads these little slight movements and is able to connect on teammates in the most unorthodox situations and in O'Brien's case I think that's something that will really be nice in his tool set I don't think there's too much more there and I think especially in terms of using his physicality there's a lot more room to grow there there's a good product here with the playmaking and something to build off of at number six is my boy Cole Reshny you know what I mean, these are NHL scouts. I completely understand why Reshny might be lower down, especially considering his size, but dang it, I still love this guy. Even in saying that though, he's not incredibly small. He's five foot 10, 183 pounds, but I think considering his motor, considering the way he's able to feed off his teammates and make sure the puck is turned in the right direction, he's just somebody that I think is just so smart, so complete already in his overall habits. And I think that's something that you've already seen has translated to wherever he's played, whether it be the World Hockey Challenge, the WHL, the Holinka Gretzky, cup seven points in five games Reshni will turn a lot of heads now this one is fascinating at number seven you got Emil Gitte who is somebody that in terms of scoring has done great things in the QMJHL already the World Hockey Challenge the Gretzky Cup as well you can see this last year 25 goals 57 points in 61 games I am a little bit more bitter on him when you look at the overall game the compete level there some of the skating attributes too at least to a player uh, compared to a player like Denoye who I think is gonna be a lot more pro ready even a Justin Carboneau I would say has more projectable trades with the skating that he has in Gite's case though he has some good highlight real moments and we'll see how much that translates onto this year at number 18 we're just getting straight disrespectful here with Jacob Ice Wozniak I mean I love him I think he's somebody that with the physical traits he has the goal scoring ability there's a real knack for the physical play of the game and he's somebody that I think can dominate in that area dominate around the net as well 18 I think is pretty low considering I think the potential that he provides and the last player I wanted to mention here at number 20 Joshua Joshua Ravensbergen is coming Coming in at number 20 as the first goalie on this list, the only goalie on this list, and I could completely see why. For how well he's already done with Prince George, you can see a 907 save percentage last year at six foot four. He's gonna be a really interesting case this year. You can see he went from the BC EHL U18 level to the WHL already playing so good. And you look at that win and loss record too, 26, 4, and 1, and also the playoffs as well, a 931 save percentage in 12 games. Just astounding for a goaltender that young. I still have to see a lot more on him and actually dissect his game a lot more because, I mean, goalies are out of my realm in, in, in most times, especially before their draft years. In Ravensburgens, though, he's somebody that is going to be really interesting to watch this year, and I'm fascinated to see how he does. Now, interestingly, I have a few players here that were on my top 20 that didn't end up in this top 20 list, mostly D. The only forward was Justin Carboneau, who I think is somebody that should be considered for this range. I can see why he wouldn't be in the top 20, maybe, just because there is some defensive uh, inconsistency but I think the powerful skating stride he has, the goal scoring ability he has too, is just far and away a big trait in the QMJHL that'll take him a long ways. You also look at the D's too in Sasha Bomidian, who I think is a really good one. Somebody that already has such good traits with his skating, with the passing level he has going to Boston University this year. You also got Jackson Smith out of Tri-City and even Kashana Aitchison out of the Barry Colts. You have some good D here, some underrated ones who aren't on this list, but still, I think all these guys could factor into the top 20 by the time it's all said and done. We'll just have to wait and see. That's going to be it for today's prospect breakdown. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell. Comment down below your thoughts on this list and what you agree, what you disagree with, and what you were the big surprises for you as well. Of course, make sure you share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online as well. And click on this card for all my hockey prospects talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you, BetUS, for sponsoring today's video, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.